Good afternoon. I presume by now you all figured out that matrices and vectors are very much related. And in that, with that in mind, we're going to look at how those of you who have gotten pretty good or over time learned how to use Excel, as well as those of you who have at least tried to learn to use the TI, and those of you who've done math, specifically matrix math, are all doing the same thing, and you need to recognize that, in fact, the basic set of matrix mathematics and vector mathematics that you'll finally, I presume, find in also in CAD and in Mathematica or Math, math Lab Mathematica is also some basic operations of matrix manipulation. Matrix manipulation. So we're looking here, we've looked at it already, but we've looked at a cable here that's going up from point four, we'll call that point four, up to point one, point two, point three, and then a weight acting down, W, right, as a concurrent force problem. And we know that on sum, what we know is that the sum of the forces equals zero, and that can be a sum of the forces, the x, the y, and the z. And we know in this case, the sum of the moments equaling zero doesn't mean anything because they're all concurrent, and each of those forces is concurrent about, they have a common point of, common point in their lines of force, therefore they have no moment about that point. So the sum of the moments doesn't get you anything, and so you are left, in, in essence, with three equations, and three unknowns. And you're going to see that come up a lot both in cables and in truss problems that are statistically determined. So let's look at what we have here. First off, let's remember that points are really vectors. So this point one right here is really defined as a vector. If I call this down to be my zero, 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 it's defined by a vector, a radial vector that goes from here to there. So points are vectors, which means that if you take a vector minus a vector, in other words, P1 minus P4, which essentially is a, the length of the cable or the, the cable run from P4 to P1, you get a vector. So when you subtract two points from each other, you get a vector. Thereby, lines, of course, are vectors. So let's look at a, the typical definition that we, we've been working with and a concurrent force problem, let's remember that this is both 2D and 3D. Looking for my, there it is. So cable A goes from point four to point one. Cable B goes from point four to point two, and cable C goes from point four to point three. And then of course, there's another cable hanging down, a weight goes point four down. So it has a known point of application and it goes down. 0x, zero 0y, zero and a minus in the z. If you're given points, right, and especially here, often that fourth point might be something varying based on some other values. In other words, this equation here to know where point 4 is, is basically uh, something you probably might have done in GPS when you have three positions and three lengths and you get a solved position for a location. So just knowledge of P1, P2, P3, and P4 or some other variable that gets you to P4 is going to get you these vectors. Now we're still talking about cables, right? And once again we have to remember that the geometry of the cable get you the geometry of the force. And so what we really need is not so much the whole vector, we need the unit vector lambda in the direction of any one of those vectors. And the unit vector, if we remember, is going to be 
the vector, which in this case is a subtraction of one vector from another, right? A point's a vector, a point's a vector, therefore a subtraction of two vectors is a vector. You can need the vector divided by the length of the vector. Or basically, if you think about it, it is the vector divided by the square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared plus delta z squared. And when you have that, you've described your directions, and you can go about and solve using matrix matrices and a basic equation. You can solve either using Excel, a calculator, graphics. You can solve for that equation. So let's look at how that, what that equation looks like here. We'll take a little bit of a pause here and finish up this 10 minutes pretty quickly. All right, so this is what cable the vector cable A will be. Of course, remember P4 is this, and if cable A is going to go from 16.67, 16.67 to 4, if we assume this is where our point 4 is at, this is what the, the vector, the complete vector, the linear vector that describes cable A, the linear vector that describes cable B, cable B going from point 4 to point 2, and of course that looks, right, if you're going point 2 minus point 4, 0 minus 16.67 is there, and 25 minus 16.67 is there, and this is what the third vector looks like. What we then have to remember that when we get into the calculation for forces, we're not interested in the cable per se for its length. We are interested in it for its direction. And so what we do in each case is we take this, divide it by the length of cable A. And this divided by the length of cable B, and this divided by the length of cable C, and we get lambda sub a, lambda sub b, and lambda sub c, which are each unit vectors in the direction of the vector. Of course, we also know lambda of the weight, which is going to be equal to minus 1k. And when you get to this point, you can throw it into a basic formula, some basic formulas about some of the forces in the x, the y, and the z, and then use matrices to solve them. So that will be the next step. We'll pause again. And here you see the calculation. If you take 8.33 squared plus 8.33 squared plus 4 squared square root, take that length, divide this by the length, you get these unit vectors. If you notice, they're all positive going up. X y and z's. So this, when you see this depiction, it is 0.670i plus 0.67j plus 0.33322k. So that is a unit vector. So in case or later, if there is a force of 10, you know that the force is going to be, the vector is going to be 10 times each of these things in the i, j, and k directions. This is lambda sub c right here. I'm going to change that for you. You can see I'm using equation writer here and a mix thereof. So now we have basically our definition of the directions. And if you remember, this was the sine of phi. This was the cosine of phi times the cosine of theta. And this was the cosine of phi times the sine of theta. When in fact theta is the azimuth, azimuthal angle from the standard position angle, and phi is the elevation angle. Once again, I will point out in Wolfram Alpha, those are a little bit reversed. We go from there to the next step. I'm going to pause again. And here's the last part of that before we kick to the next two videos to show you how to punch it into Excel and your calculator, and that is this. We know the direction of A, the direction of B, and the direction of C. We stack them. This is the direction of A. This is the direction of B. This is the direction of C. We know the opposite of the unknowns. They go right here. And that is because why? What you wrote first was the sum of the forces. And all, of course, the forces are on one side of the equation equals 0. But then you 
take your knowns to the other side. That's why you have the opposite of the knowns. The known here, you saw the direction came from the fact that you know it was weight going down. That doesn't always have to be the case. It'd be something coming up. It could be something going over. So these are not always going to be zero. This is what you've written out. This is what it looks like when you write it in a matrix. And then what you do is you just go ahead and write the reverse row echelon format of that. Essentially what you're doing is writing an inverse. And I'll show you that in Excel and on the calculator. Thanks for listening.